In the vast expanse of the Indonesian waters, a chilling event unfolded, capturing the attention of the nation and the world. It was a day like any other, until the commander of the Indonesian National Armed Forces, made a startling revelation that would send shockwaves through the hearts of the Indonesian people. On that fateful April day in 2021, KRI Nangala 402, a German-made submarine, vanished without a trace with its 53-man crew. Its whereabouts became a haunting mystery, leaving everyone searching for answers. An Indonesian Navy spokesperson shed some light on the situation, disclosing that Nangala had been engaged in a crucial torpedo drill. However, the submarine failed to report its results as expected, plunging the naval forces into confusion and concern. As the layers of this event began to unravel, details emerged, painting a picture of a mission teetering on the edge of uncertainty. Nangala had requested permission to dive into the deep, dark depths of the ocean to carry out the task of firing a torpedo. When the clock struck 3 a.m. on 21 April 2021, Nangala embarked on this pivotal endeavor, descending into the abyss. One hour later at 4 a.m., the vessel should have been flooding its torpedo tubes, preparing for the imminent release of its lethal payload. The tension mounted, and the crew's expertise and precision were put to the ultimate test. The minutes ticked away, and the weight of the moment hung in the air. At 4.25 a.m., the last known contact with Nangala occurred, just moments before the commanding officer of the training task force was set to authorize the launch of the torpedo. Yet, silence engulfed the communication channels right after the last contact. What had transpired in those fleeting moments? What had caused this abrupt severing of connection with the outside world? The truth would later emerge, casting a shadow of sorrow over the unfolding events. The Indonesian Navy revealed that before the fateful disappearance, Nangala had unleashed both a live torpedo and a practice one. But somewhere amidst the swirling currents and hidden depths, contact with the submarine was irrevocably lost. As the news of Nangala's disappearance spread like wildfire, the Indonesian Navy sent a piercing distress call to the International Submarine Escape and Rescue Liaison Office. It was a call of desperation, a somber acknowledgement that the submarine was missing and, tragically, likely sunk. The Indonesian Navy, grappling with this heart-wrenching reality, speculated that Nangala might have experienced a catastrophic power outage, causing it to plunge to a depth of 600 to 700 meters, far beyond its crush depth. The gravity of the situation became painfully clear as it was revealed that Nangala had a maximum diving capability of 500 meters, a perilous depth in its own right. Yet, the deepest abysses of the Bali Sea stretched far beyond, descending over 1,500 meters below the surface. If the submarine had gone beyond its crush depth of 500 meters, its pressure hull would likely have imploded. Adding to the challenge, it was discovered that during the drill, the submarine's underwater telephone had malfunctioned, impeding crucial communications between the stranded vessel and the rescue vessels desperately searching the area. It was a cruel twist of fate, exacerbating the already daunting task of locating Nangala and its crew. But who was on board the Nangala? On that ill-fated day, Nangala carried the hopes and dreams of 53 individuals deep beneath the waves. Among them were 49 dedicated crew members, their commitment to duty intertwined with the vessel's fate. Standing at the helm was Colonel Harry Setchewan, the highest-ranking naval officer aboard and commander of the submarine unit of the 2nd Fleet Command. Alongside him were Lieutenant Colonel Harry Octavian, the submarine's commander, and Lieutenant Colonel Irfan Suri, an officer specializing in weapons materials and electronic service. Together, they formed a resilient team navigating uncharted waters, bound by the mission they had undertaken. But soon, the race against time became a battle for survival. At noon on the second day, the Navy revealed that the oxygen reserves aboard Nangala could sustain the entire crew and passengers for three more days. The ticking clock held the crew's destiny, with the oxygen supply set to expire on the 24th of April at 3 a.m. Submarine experts, acknowledging the existence of backup systems, offered a glimmer of possibility, hinting that the equipment's condition could determine the crew's chances of survival. Yet, there were also growing concerns that even before the oxygen could be used up, the buildup of carbon dioxide in the cabin could potentially suffocate the people on board first. To confront this unprecedented crisis, a crisis center was established in Surabaya. Within its walls, a sanctuary of resolute determination took shape equipped with an ambulance and a mobile hyperbaric chamber. It stood as a symbol of unwavering support, ready to aid the rescue efforts and serve as a conduit of information for the anxious families awaiting news of their loved ones. 
In the face of such adversity, the nation's leader, President Joko Widodo, recognized the paramount importance of the crew's safety. With a heavy heart, he called upon the nation to unite in prayer, to send their thoughts and wishes to those souls trapped beneath the waves. It was a collective plea, a poignant reminder of the human spirit's resilience and the power of hope in the darkest of times. As part of the search and rescue efforts, aerial search teams took to the skies, scanning the vast expanse of the ocean's surface. Their mission, to uncover any clue that could lead them to the missing submarine. And their efforts bore fruit. Traces of an oil spill glistened upon the water's surface, serving as a cryptic signpost pointing to the submarine's probable diving location. With determination and unwavering resolve, the Indonesian Navy swiftly mobilized its forces to comb the waters in search of Nangala. At the same time, a team of skilled divers ventured into the depths, their mission to locate the stricken vessel and bring hope to a nation gripped by anxiety. News of the unfolding crisis reached far and wide, eliciting a response from the global community. The Singapore Navy deployed its submarine rescue vessel, MV Swift Rescue, and the Malaysian Navy dispatched MV Mega Bakti. Meanwhile, the Indian Navy's deep submergence rescue vehicle also set course for the search area. The United States, too, extended a helping hand, deploying its airborne assets, including a maritime patrol aircraft. Reinforcements also arrived from Australia, as its vessels joined the search operation. Together, nations rallied, united by a shared goal, to find Nangala and the souls that dwelled within its steel embrace. And then new developments emerged. Reports trickled in that an oil slick had been sighted at multiple locations, adding a bittersweet twist to the search. An Indonesian warship had also picked up mysterious underwater movements, offering a fleeting glimpse of hope. Yet, the elusive contact vanished before revealing its true nature, leaving the naval forces yearning for more answers. The search and rescue efforts intensified, as a collective hope surged through the hearts of the Indonesian people, yearning for a glimmer of light in the darkness. But then came the heartbreaking discovery that reverberated across the world. The Indonesian Navy, in their tireless search for answers, stumbled upon fragments that told a somber tale. Debris linked to Nangala was found floating on the sea surface, providing pieces of a puzzle that confirmed the submarine's tragic fate. Among the remnants were components associated with torpedo tubes, a coolant pipe insulator, a bottle of periscope grease, and prayer rugs. Found within a 10 nautical mile radius of the submarine's last known location, there was little doubt that these fragments belonged to Nangala. The submarine was thus declared sunken. The Indonesian Navy disclosed that sonar scans had revealed the chilling truth. Nangala lay at a depth of 850 meters, far beyond its presumed crush depth of 500 meters. The immensity of the ocean had claimed the vessel, and the weight of the realization settled upon the hearts of all involved. Yet, in the face of this devastating news, the spirit of collaboration persisted. The Indonesian warship, Kree Rigel, equipped with its powerful multi-beam echo sounder, embarked on a mission to confirm the submarine's final resting place. But the limitations of their equipment loomed large, with a maximum operational depth of 800 meters. It was then that a helping hand arrived from the Singapore Navy's MV Swift Rescue, which has a drone capable of reaching depths of 1,000 meters. At 9.04 a.m. on 25 April 2021, visual contact was made. The remnants of Nangala came into view, a fragmented testament to a tragedy that had unfolded in the depths. The drone, operating from MV Swift Rescue, bore witness to the heartbreaking truth. The submarine had split into three parts. The once unified vessel now lay fragmented, with the ship's hull, stern and main body separated, forever lost to the ocean's embrace. With heavy hearts, the Indonesian Navy confirmed the inevitable. On 25 April 2021, it was announced that all 53 individuals aboard Nangala had perished. Underwater scans unveiled glimpses of the submarine's remains, revealing shattered pieces of its structure, including the rudder, diving plane, anchor, and external portions of the pressure hull. Among the debris, poignant reminders of the human presence were found, including an MK-11 submarine escape suit. Each fragment served as a solemn testament to the lives lost. Through the combined efforts of nations, the final position of Nangala was confirmed. KRI Rigel, utilizing its multi-beam echo sounder, pinpointed the submarine's resting place. Approximately 1,400 meters from the point of descent, Nangala's eternal slumber was marked. Amidst the shroud of tragedy, questions arose, seeking to shed light on the circumstances surrounding Nangala's untimely fate.
the Indonesian Navy, in its quest for an explanation for the disaster, considered the possibility of a power outage. It was not an unfamiliar occurrence, as the submarine had previously faced a similar challenge when an electrical fuse blew, plunging the vessel into darkness. However, in that instance, the crew successfully executed an emergency main ballast tank blow, averting disaster and resurfacing safely. Yet, this time, fate had a different outcome. Following the discovery of debris, speculation arose regarding the nature of Nangala's demise. One possibility was that the submarine had suffered a crack rather than an explosion since a sonar would have detected an explosion if it had occurred. The investigation continued, seeking clues that would unravel the mystery of the submarine's tragic end. A retired Major General of the Indonesian Navy raised concerns about the adequacy of the refit performed by South Korean firm DSME in 2012. He questioned whether the refurbishment had been executed properly, pointing to a failed torpedo firing test that had resulted in three deaths previously. He also voiced his suspicion that Nangala had surpassed its intended capacity, with 53 individuals aboard instead of the designated 38-man capacity. In contrast, the Indonesian Navy asserted that the submarine was combat-ready, having received a letter of acceptance, and boasted a successful track record in firing exercises. The disparity in viewpoints deepened the search for clarity, as the nation grappled with the consequences of these unanswered questions. Whispers of alleged poor maintenance filtered through, adding another layer of complexity to the unfolding tale. The late Lieutenant Colonel Harry Octavian, commander of Nangala, who had perished in the tragedy, was reported to have been frustrated with the poor quality and untimeliness of maintenance services provided by the state-owned shipyard, PT PAL. It was a stark indictment of the maintenance practices that had plagued the submarine fleet. Nangala's last servicing by PT PAL occurred in 2020, but no further refitting was sought after the 2012 refurbishment, despite the recommended maintenance interval of at least once every six years. These revelations raised further questions about the overall state of the submarine and the adequacy of the maintenance procedures in ensuring its seaworthiness. The whispers of concern surrounding Nangala's history of mishaps grew louder as submariners, speaking on condition of anonymity, shared their accounts. Their testimonies painted a troubling picture of a vessel plagued by maritime incidents. In 2017, an unexpected incident unfolded when the submarine plunged a staggering 84 meters into the waters of North Bali. The cause was traced back to water entering the snorkel tube, leading to a dangerous drop that thrust the crew into an emergency situation. A similar occurrence took place in 2014 off the shores of West Bali, where Nangala experienced a sudden descent of 17 meters due to the same problem. These incidents were far from ordinary and demanded swift action to avert disaster. The submariners emphasized the critical need for quick reactions and decisive solutions to navigate these perilous situations. A former Indonesian Navy Deputy Chief of Staff lent further insight into the submarine's history. He recalled a connection problem with Nangala's torpedo tubes in 2016, a complication that, thankfully, was ultimately resolved. These revelations added even more complexity to the narrative surrounding Nangala's tragic fate. It underscored the significance of not only comprehending the events leading to the submarine's sinking but also evaluating the cumulative impact of past incidents. As the investigation unfolded, these accounts would serve as crucial pieces of the puzzle, shedding light on the broader context of Nangala's operational challenges. Despite the Navy's tireless efforts, the quest to salvage the wreckage of the KRI Nangala submarine came to a somber halt. In June 2021, Indonesia made the difficult decision to call off the salvage operation as the wreckage remained beyond reach, resting at a depth of over 800 meters. The solemn truth remained unchanged, none of the bodies of the 53 individuals could be recovered. The cause of the disaster continued to elude investigators, as they strived to understand what transpired during those fateful moments. Nonetheless, the memory of the Kree Nangala and its brave crew would forever remain etched in the nation's memory, serving as a constant reminder of the perils faced by those who embark on maritime endeavors. But did you know that just a few years before, in 2017, another submarine went missing off the coast of Argentina, with 44 crew on board? Watch this video to find out more.